Hello and welcome. Before I get into today's video, I just want to say a very big thank you to all of the new viewers who've, who've come in recently and left helpful comments on my, my previous Ada videos. I saw that my video actually got shared on the Ada subreddit, which I think is super cool. And I'm really appreciative that people are coming in who actually know how this stuff works. The main topic today is, well, overarching is I want to start making little toy programs in Ada. And part of that is breaking things down. So I'm ready to go. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to make tic-tac-toe. But in order to do that, tic-tac-toe is not going to be one single procedure. So I'm going to need to make some little subroutines and things. And so that's what I want to look at today. I want to look at making procedures and functions and how those things work. To start with, this is just a blank project. I'll start this up. I'm going to define my own type, which I will call matrix. And that will be, I'm going to make a, a three by three array. So for the indices, we'll be going one to three for the rows and for the columns. And I'm just going to make a matrix of integers. I know it's not common, but this is my example. So there we have it. Now I can go ahead and define a matrix. Something like that. So I've got my variable name, I've got the data type, and then I've got the, the definition of that. Now onto the work. So in Ada, there are procedures and functions. What's the difference between those? It really comes down to basically whether the routine returns a value or not. So if a routine does not return a value, it's called a procedure. If a routine does return a value, it's called a function. That's it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a procedure which will take in a matrix and print that out to the terminal. Most blocks in Ada have a begin and end, and most of the time, or all the time actually, the end will mirror the actual thing which is ending. And this is something that I really enjoy about the language because it's very explicit. There's no, there's no special formatting tricks or anything like that. It's straight prose. Though I do find myself wishing that this um, Ada language server output wouldn't keep sh randomly showing up. Oh, well. All right, so at this point, I'm basically looping through every element of the matrix. Let me go ahead and print that out. So I'll use put. I use ij to access the relevant element. That's an integer. And so to convert that into a string, I'll use the image property, and then I'll concatenate a space just so the numbers are separated. So currently this will print everything out as a single line. I can, I can actually test that by going down here and saying, hey, display matrix just like this. Let's go ahead and build that, provided I've made no errors, which, I, oh, no, it works. Okay, so as you can see, this has printed the whole thing just as a, a straight line. So of course, after the columns do a full loop, I want to go down and make another line, and I'm just going to use a blank put line. There we have it. Okay, let me write another quick example. A lot of fun, everyone's favorite. Now, the reason I'm doing this example is that in the previous procedure, we took in an argument. We can actually take in multiple arguments. And we can also take no arguments. But how cool is this? If our procedure takes no arguments, oh jeez, come on. If our procedure takes no arguments, then we actually don't need brackets. How cool is that? It does what I expect it to. It works. This is all fine. What if we want a procedure to modify 
an array. Here I'll change this procedure so that instead of just displaying the matrix, it will take in a matrix and a position as well as let's say a value and it will simply set the corresponding element. So we're going to like set one element of the matrix. You see what I'm getting at here? The question is, was that matrix passed in by value or by reference? Sort of ambiguous. So let's take this and define it to be its current value. Oh, whoops, what am I even thinking? That would be if we were incrementing, we're just setting it. Okay, there. So you write the, um, the matrix. So let's go ahead and set that row one, column one set it to 12, and then we'll read that back. So we'll display the matrix and see what happened to it. You're probably yelling through the screen. If you know what's gonna happen, let's have a look. Ah, oh, it errored, perfect. So the thing with Ada is Ada does not like ambiguity. So actually, um, actually in here, when we have parameters, we also have specifiers. So we can have an in parameter which means that this is a basically a read only. We can have an out parameter, which means that we're sort of going to be populating this and returning that, but implicitly, if we set this value within the function, then it will be returned. And we can also have an in out parameter, which is read write. And this will actually fix the, um, the issue here. So we can go ahead and run that. There we go. So here we have our matrix. And then we have the matrix again, but row one, column one has been set to 12. I'll just put an extra line in there after printing the matrix. There we have it, excellent. Now, if you've come from OpenGL background, this in out might be a little reminiscent of the way GLSL handles function parameters, which I think is super cool. As a last example, this is procedures and functions. I'm going to make a function. Let's say we want to get the trace of a matrix. The trace of a matrix is the sum of its diagonal elements. looks pretty similar so far to our procedure, but there is one thing that we need to change. We need to specify the return type. And the way we do that is we say return. Also note that we have declared a local variable for this function. Typically, I like to declare variables up front, but there is syntax to declare local variables scoped just to regions of a function. Any sort of declarations of variables typically happen between the um, definition of the function up here and the begin section. This is the declarative region in here. And you will actually note that all of the procedures and data types and things, everything that I've done here is in a declarative region, declarative region for the main procedure. So one of the things with Ada is you can sort of read it top to bottom and you'll more or less see everything. If this is a little much, which it definitely will be for larger programs, we can also break these out into separate modules and I'll be having a look at that in the next video. But for now, let's enjoy the fruits of our labors. So we'll just get the trace of this matrix. So we'll call that function, we'll call trace, put in my matrix, and then, whoops, because that returns an integer, we will then convert that to a string. So I'm actually going to include this source code just because, so if you check the video description in the GitHub repo there, the source code will be there. Um, but yeah, here we have it. So again, those were some functions and procedures I can go off to the right, call this, 
Ha <laughs> ha! What's going on here? Of course, it's a diagonal element, so the row and column are the same. I do know maths. Believe it or not. Okay, perfect. So we've got the matrices, and then we've got the trace of the matrix. That's all behaving as we expect. As always, we do have some style issues, and that, that's just because I quickly coded this up while I was speaking. Let me see if I can fix these. And this is just one of those things that comes with time. The more practice you get, the easier it is to uh, spot those style errors before it hits the compiler. So um, anyway, that was all I wanted to do. Again, today we just had a little look at writing some procedures and functions. I hope you enjoyed that. All the best, happy coding, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.